Cornerstone 84, I got to go for one of the days, and I had heard one song from this band on the local Christian rock alternative show, like that went from, you know, 11.30 p.m. to midnight, or something like that. And uh, there was a song called Renaissance Man. And I, that song was so cool, and it, and it, I was actually convinced that the Christian radio station had lost its license and now it was just a regular rock station because this did not sound like the stuff that they played on that station. Um, so I'd heard that one song and I went up front. I was 13 years, I was almost 14, and I pushed my way up to the front. And I wasn't right in the very front, I was, I was maybe two people back. And I was a scrawny little thing and they had this like snow fence thing that you could get up to but you, you know, to keep you from getting pushed actually under the stage. Uh, this band came out and played a show that literally changed the direction of my life. It, the concept of what Christians could do with music and art and still speak to the culture at large was right there. Now, a few years later, they put out a record, a self-titled record, uh, on Island that came out the same day as a little record called Joshua Tree. And uh, so the label kind of was busy with that, and uh, I guess we'll never know what would have happened if the whole world had heard what I think is absolutely, hands down, one of the most amazing rock and roll records ever released, ever released, period. Um, probably the, the funniest 77s related cornerstone memory I have was when they were playing the main stage, I think it was 1992, and uh, after them was this new Christian rap band called DC Talk, right? And uh, now, Toby is a, a really good friend of mine now, and I know that he actually loves Cornerstone. And I think that what happened that night had a huge influence on him because the crowd was so rabid for the 77s and kept singing the chorus. I think it was Do It For Love, right? Yeah. Do It For Love. And they just sang and sang. So during the whole set change, DC Talks putting their stuff up there, trying to do line checks, the crowd it just keeps singing the 77s. Like, we don't want DC Talk. We want to just hear the 77s for the rest of our lives, if that's okay. Uh, and uh, and so at some point, Vic, this, the, the MC, had to come out and sort of beg the crowd to stop singing the 77 song because this other band needed to play. And I know that, that uh, DC Talk, those guys, are massive fans of this band as well. Uh, I do think that in my life, uh, I don't know how anybody else whose songs have spoken to me like this. They've been the way I've expressed my feelings to other people. They were some of the songs I first played for this girl named Michelle that I wanted to hang out with and I wanted to tell her how I felt. I gave her 77 songs to express my affections for her. I took her to see the 77s at Cornerstone, I think it was probably 89 or 90, uh, to say this is the way music should be. This is the way the world should be. This is the way love is, right? So this is going to be a fantastic night, and I want you to give all of your love. I want to give you all of your focus, of all of your passion. This is seriously the highlight for me. Please, give it up for the 77s. Live up to that. We're, we're, we're half the band we used to be. On guitar, David Lenart.
because we didn't always have real big, um, you know, like uh, recording budgets. So the next song we're gonna do, I wrote for my daughter about 23 years ago. Some of you might remember it, and we actually recorded it in a laundry room. If you can believe that, how glamorous is that, right? It was in Bill Harmon from The Straw Men. You guys remember The Straw Men? Dave. When was the Strawman's first tape here? Man, late 80s, maybe. 88, 89? 88, yeah. Anybody get that cassette? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was around the time that we did this laundry room thing, and his wife, Bill Harmon's wife, she kept, like, uh, disrupting the session in order to check on the spin cycle. So we're gonna do we're gonna see if we can do it. Devil in the deep blue sea ran dry. The first time I saw your face, I thought I'd die.
pieces intertwined Something so down to earth and so divine Is mine and I never want to lose it Never want to lose it Search forever, never find Treasure to compare with what's already mine several albums in a barn. He recorded uh, Say Your Prayers in a Barn, Direct, uh, The Boat Ashore, a whole bunch of things that got recorded in that barn. But uh, this song in particular makes me think of the barn. Now, uh, are there any Lutherans out there? Yeah! Yeah! We have one. One Lutheran, come on. Let's, let's, okay, two. All right, I see that hand. Anybody else? God bless you, you may put it down. Anybody else? God bless you. We're just going to wait. We're just going to wait. Anybody? Recovering Lutherans? Now, not all Lutherans are liberal. You could admit. You can just say you're Lutheran and we'll, we'll, we'll cast your lot on the uh, conservative side. That way you don't have to admit that you're a liberal Lutheran. It's okay. So, whether you're a Lutheran or not, pretend you're on a Lutheran retreat because this is probably not unlike one right now pretend you're all about 40 years younger that means some of you won't exist but that's all right you're in limbo limbo okay so we're going to do the lutheran hymn so uh the more voices the better the more out of tune voices the better and so uh, those of you who know it please sing along on the choruses there's a chorus at the beginning and a chorus at the end. If we get everyone singing this, it's going to be really nice. I'm going to dedicate this to a great American, Andy Griffith, who passed away yesterday. This is for him. I tried, I tried uh, doing a tribute for him in the song uh, last show we did last night. It, it, didn't, I hope work. I, it didn't work. Totally and, through. And that's why I'm going to do it again tonight. Those who sing it, help me. I sing your praises in the morning. I sing your praises. 
cases in the day. I sing praises every evening. I sing praises always. You are there at every dawning. And inside the even time, every afternoon and morning, you are there. You are walking by my side. Look out, dude. We have, we're going to have several tonight. Some of you may remember this album. It's called Echoes of Faith. It's got the, got the dinosaurs on it. It's been out of print for, I don't know, 16 years, and people have been bugging the crap out of me to, you know, burn it off my hard drive and mail it to them, which I've done for a slight fee. Some of you may have some of those. So we've re-released it with yet another Echoes of Faith concert that we discovered. We didn't know it existed, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, we have it for sale here tonight. Uh, you can see me and David right there on the cover. We, we cut Mark Harmon out because, you know, we were doing this tour, so we needed to promote ourselves as a duo. And there, but, but there's lots of pictures of Mark. He was a sexy babe in his young years. And there's a lot of pictures of him inside the booklet, filled with historical photographs and an essay in which I completely, you know, say terrible things. All right, so anyway, we want you all to buy five copies and hand them out to your friends during the tribulation. All right. <laughs> you guys believe that? Is this a trip, like a tribulation? Too many churches. There's too many churches here represented for us to. We change our theology every night, so depending on what we sell the album. You guys have heard all these jokes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Terry isn't here, so I got to tell him for him. And uh, he sends his love. I, I talked to him yesterday, and he's very sad he couldn't be here. So, on behalf of Mr. Terry Taylor, God bless you all, and thank you for a great 28 years for the Lost Dogs. Those of you who are clapping for what I just said can't even add right because the Lost Dogs have only been together for 20 years. <laughs> Actually, that's not right either. 20, 21 years. Old enough to drink. Old enough to drink. Dave. Dave is going to say a series of inappropriate things tonight, and I just want to say that Dave has become me. I'm going to be the Christian tonight. Dave's going to push, push the boundaries. But Glenn says it's okay because this is the last one, so... Okay, so now we're going to do a song from Echoes of Faith that you're all going to buy five copies of.
curse the sun in the summer burns me up to the blind today here I curse the cold in the winter but I don't really mind I of it all, but it's all over town. Mm -hmm. I would give any money to see the sky again sunny, but I let it rain really pour, so my tears let me drown. Well, you know, when I was saying that Dave and I were half the band uh, we used to be, it's true. Um, we're, I'm twice the man I used to be. But um, we, we're just not a band without our drummers. So uh, we're going to be having a little drum audition here in a few minutes. But before we do that, you know, last March Dave and I thought we were such big men that we could go out and tour the uh, Sticks and Stones album by ourselves, just the two of us, which leads me to capitalistic moment number two. Now, I don't, a lot of you have told me this album is very important to you, 
uh, a lot of you remember where you were, maybe not who you were, but you definitely remember where you were when you first got it. And, you know, we try to sell these every night and everyone goes, well, I already have that. Well, no, you don't. You don't have this one. Some of you do, so the hip ones do. The few, the proud. But what this is, is it's been remastered. It, you know, people always use that as a, as a gimmick, but I never liked the way Sticks and Stones sounded. I thought it was very tinny. So we really made it sound sweet. And we added a second disc of just ridiculous demos that didn't make the cut. And wonderful live recordings of us from uh, around the time we were making this album. And uh, when we thought we were the Grateful Dead. And we would stretch out songs for 15 minutes. Uh, some of you were victims of that here over the years. To greater, varying degrees of success or failure depending, but at least we tried for it. So I want each and every one of you to buy five copies of this for your tribulation pals. There's also historical photographs inside when I was half the man that I am now. All right. Another thing we're going to attempt to do is we're going to start with the least requested, least favorite, most obscure, uh, never mentioned to me or complimented 77 song on the album. And if we can get through that and make you guys like it, then we'll be able to get through the rest of the set. It's a song written by Mark Toodle and Aaron Smith called Love Without Dreams.
Alexis. We like you. All right, now we can get through the rest of the set. All right, now we're going to do some electric music and boogie. Maybe not quite that. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now, many of you think this is still the all request weekend of the It's For You uh, album when Dave and I went out 15 years ago and I had the peachy folder and uh, proceeded to make fools of ourselves playing songs we didn't know from the catalog. It was a great album, but it wasn't a great tour for us because there was a lot of stress involved in not in playing songs you didn't know every night. Nowhere else. We're gonna play songs we kind of know tonight. Else. All right. So I was talking about a drum audition. Uh, you know, auditioning drummers. Well, drummers are a pain in general. Okay, I'm just gonna go on record and say that I never worked with one that wasn't. They probably say that about guitar players and especially about this one. But, uh, you know, when you're a kid and you're first putting your groups together in the neighborhood to put on a show for your parents and your neighbors, you always have to audition drummers and the first two or three that show up are girls. Um, and that's, I love girls, as you know. But when you're a kid, uh, girl drummers show up with their moms. And, you know, and the thing is, is the girls are usually really cute. So this is two problems at once. Well, three, because usually they don't play good. At that age. I mean, I know a lot of amazing female drummers, but when you're, you know, when you're first starting out, um, it's not so good. So anyway, they show up, and they're terrible, and you have to find a way to explain to their mom that way you will call you, you know, this. Meanwhile, you're trying to find a way to get with them and get their number, and, get them away from moms. What? Is that the daughter or the mom? As I said, Dave, Dave is going to say a lot of non-Christian things tonight. That's the first of several. She could be cute. Dave, you're, gonna, you're ruining everything I've tried to build here for 28 years. You just sunk. All right, so anyway. We are going to audition a spiritual girl tonight. Now, that doesn't mean she's spiritually, you know, cool. That means that she's in the spirit realm. You can't see her. You're going to be able to hear her. All of our drummers are spiritual tonight. And we're going to have a contest and see which one wins. So we're going to start with a girl to recreate our childhood. What are we going to name her, Dave? I like Brittany. That is so, what, 90s, 80s, what? There's a couple fans out there. Are there any Britneys out there? It's one of my favorite names. I mean, there's a lot of hot... Most Britneys are hot, so let's just stick with that. Maybe she'll be a hot drummer, too. You just never can tell. All right, so we're going to begin with Britney. If you like her at the end, please show your applause. And uh, we don't have the Terry's Throne checko meter to measure the applause, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, take it away, Britney. Hang on, there's a button here. i got to push to make her go. Very Britney like, isn't it?
She did good. She rocked steady. Okay, okay, let's, let's hold your applause until the end. All right, now we're going to have a bit of a change of pace because it's a different sort of beat. We have to have a, a guy now, and uh, we've decided to name this one Ernie because we lost another great American, Don Grady from My Three Sons. Let's hear it for Don. Some of you older people might remember him. He was in a band called The Yellow Balloon, and uh, it's, like, it's like The Yellow Balloon on a rainy afternoon. But the thing I remember about Don Grady is that, I, you know, I used to like watching My Three Sons, but I hated those wingtips that would be tapping, you know, during the theme. Because I was forced to wear orthopedic shoes, wingtips, to school, when everyone else was wearing beetle boots. It left a mental scar, and that's the product you see here tonight. It's all Don Grady's fault. So this song's for him. We're going to name him Ernie, because Ernie was his cornball kid brother. Ready, Ernest? See you. 
of this is just serving to make me miss Aaron Smith, though. I think we need to call Aaron, spiritual Aaron, to the state. Now, the problem is, is that Aaron is now old and out of it. So he's going to need some help and encouragement to bring him back to his youthful self. So we're going to bring out, to help with him and his weakness, Steve Griffith of Vector. Spiritual Griffith and Spiritual Smith. They are going to play together the, the spiritual drums, the spirit drums. And so we will we'll be able to get Aaron back up on his feet. And who knows, maybe he can stand alone for the rest of the auditions on his own. But we're going to give him a little helper. So uh, be sure to show your appreciation if you like them better than Brittany and Ernie.
getting close. I think he needs to stand on his own now. I think he's back up to speed. But the guy we're really missing is our keyboardist, Mr. Mark Tudor, who wrote so many of these wonderful songs that I've gotten all the credit and glory for. I've enjoyed that, but really it's wrong because Mark uh, was a brilliant composer and uh, wrote some of our really coolest tunes like Nowhere Else, uh, Do It For Love, Love Without Dreams, which you heard, and this next number, which is going to feature, once again, Spiritual Aaron on his own and Mr. Mark Tootle, Spiritual Mark, on the keyboards. I don't know how this is going to turn out. We're just going to have to do our very best. Yeah?
of my capitalism. Look at me in all my glory 20 years ago. It's 80 pounds less of flesh. At least 20 to 30 uh, leather strings coming down. A shock of hair. And the same guitar because I can't afford another. All right. What we have here is an amazing thing that all of you are responsible for because we played the first Cornerstone in 1984. I remember. Does anybody, is anyone here that was at that show? Besides Glenn Kaiser, yes, I see that hand. Yes, a couple. Some of you older people in the back that can't quite raise you. Now, um, my grandparents were there, my aunts and uncles, and uh, they all had their earplugs, you know. And I remember doing this sort of epileptic seizure routine on the stage, which is happening right here. Nowadays, if I tried that thing, they'd have to have a couple ambulances and oxygen. That thing that shocks your heart, you know, to bring you back to life. So we, what we thought we would do as a gift to you all, since this, this is, you know, supposedly the last time, I don't believe it still. So we're, let's have faith that, you know, if it's the last time on this property, that something else will arise somewhere. Because we all love this place, we need it, the bond, the fellowship. It's really, you know, I, I don't think Dave and I could be out working, you know, and still singing and playing had it not been for a, an awful lot of you people in this festival because we've been rejected by, you know, and I'm going to sound like Larry Norman, I've been thrown out of more churches than just about anyone. You know, when I played in 1965, which is when I got saved when I was two. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, what we did was we put the word out that we would try to find some recordings of every year that the 77s played this fest. The recordings came. And uh, there's things on here that I don't even remember playing or even conceiving. There's things that I don't even understand that I played. <laughs> Two discs, at least 20 songs, something from each year that we played. And uh, we have this for sale here tonight. So if you want us, it's called Cornerstone is Dead. Long live Cornerstone. So if you want to have a souvenir of all of our performances, some of the highlights, you know, and something that you all made that we didn't have anything to do with, Check it out. You'll enjoy it. I, Dave and I were listening to it just going, how, did we, how could we do that to them? And Dave said, well, because we did it to ourselves. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Dave's down the hole! <laughs> someone help that young man. Or some of the, some of the elders, can, can someone come and... 
Rockville counseling tent. You remember they, they, at the, you know, the, at Woodstock they had the come down tent where they would give you some Thorazine and some t TLC. Well, what's, what's the equivalent of Thorazine here at Cornerstone? More coffee? Christian drugs. Okay, uh, we're going to do a medley of our hit now. A song that I can't play anywhere and not think of all you people when I do. Uh, I call it a medley because there's about seven or eight recorded versions of this song, all of them incorrect. So we're going to, t going to attempt to combine all seven of them tonight. If you know it, sing along. In 1985, I was a very angry young man and I sat down with a tablet. And I, you know, remember tablets? There was like paper and you still see them in the hotel rooms every once in a while. Paper, a pen. And I just, I was just so upset and I just wrote all this stuff down, just blah, 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 rage, 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 you know, and I went, huh. Took it into the guys the next day, we were in, set up in the studio and I kind of threw some music on, I said, just follow me. That became the master track. I read the words off the tablet and that's why I can't hardly sing it. <laughs> That's why the words are all out of meter, because it was read off the tablet. It's on this. I snuck in another capitalistic moment. So if you know it, sing along.
the hat. Well, I'm not letting go of the hat. But these guys came, Mike came all the way from California and Dave from Atlanta. And, you know, if you didn't hear this already, nobody that's playing this year is getting paid. And I thought, you know, let's do this. Let's pass the bucket and the box around and take a little offering. If anybody has a little tip for the guys to help them get uh, some gas for the tank to get back home, that'd be great. So I'm going to put these out here and then I think if you guys keep, uh, keep up that cheering, we probably uh, might be able to get a little bit more done. Hear a little bit more music. The last 77 show at Cornerstone is not done yet. If you guys can pass these towards the back, and then whoever gets them all the way in the back, just bring them around to the merch table. That'd be great. Can you hand that one over there, Ben? So, the 77s, you guys done? Is that enough? Is it ever enough? Well, then come on, show your love. I mean, you're, you're just Harry Gore is still sitting down. What's the deal with that? Get up, Harry Gore. Come on. Come on. It's, it's late. You need to get the blood. You've been sitting down all night. The 77s. figure out which one. We've invited a couple friends from Ping, Jeff Elbel and Dave. Let's hear it for them. Now we're doing this without a rehearsal, so please, please be kind. But, you know, I've never rehearsed for a 77 show in 30 years. You all know that we do our rehearsing for these shows in the hotel room like, you know, the day of the show. Yes, you know, and you've heard the result many times. But uh, we appreciate your patience. And uh... So is the guy selling the ribeyes uh, this year? What's up with that? I only have been coming here for the last five years for those. What's the scene, man? What about that Italian guy, the guy that does the salads and the pasta on the end? Is he all shut? What about those big corn dog, that guy? Yeah. Is there anybody selling? Go over there, and, you know. Now we, now we can't have the elephant ear or the uh, what's that thing that looks like? Oh, I used to call it a heart attack on a plate. Mr. Dave Lenhart. Dave wrote this in, in the depths of his depravity. It's called Dave's Blues.
It's the original choir, Dan Michaels, the original band, All Electric, so I'm hyping them while I can. But uh, yes, we uh, got to tour through, we played in Salt Lake, only been to the airport, now I'm standing in front of the Mormon Temple. It was a sight to see, and I, I, so we went into the uh, museum, and uh, we got witnessed to by a couple of very attractive young uh, Mormon girls. It reminded me of my YWAM days, only there were some things they changed a little bit. And 
I, I didn't have the heart to tell him that I wrote a song that was called Utah and I changed it. So uh, we're going to do that song tonight. As I left the temple area, I said, I don't care, you bring them, just bring them young. Sing along with the chorus. Welcome to you to the coast of me. Don't build an absolute reality will readjust while we move in. something you can sing along with a little bit. Another wonderful Mark Tootle composition. You know, uh, Mark used to be our church choir director at the time that he wrote this song. And he wanted to get close to one of the, uh, the girls in the choir, but he had, to, he had to do it, you know, discreetly under proper circumstances. So the first thing he tried was to create an all-women's ensemble of three hand-picked girls, one of which was his object of affection. This did not get him where he wanted. So 
the next thing he did was indulged himself to write the song you were all about to sing. Uh, but he couldn't stop at that. He had another evil plan. He brought the song to the Seven of Sevens at a time when we were trying to get a record deal, you know, and be big rock stars and wear funny haircuts. A lot of women here tonight, no offense, but guys seem to like us, you know. And so when he brought this in, it was a real romantic, tender song. And I went, Mark, this is kind of sweet, you know. I don't know if our guy fans are going to like this. And he says, oh, no, Mikey, I found the new sound at last. We can have a hit record. So we recorded the track for him. You know, we humored him. Well, then on Sunday night, the girls' ensemble sang that song. Or no, they sang some other song, but then they came in Monday morning to the studio and I, I thought that they were coming in to give us a reprise of their special that they sang at church on Sunday. I said, hi girls, man, I really just got a blessing from your song last night. And they said, oh no, we're here. And I said, why are you here? And they go, well, we're here to sing on your record. Mark said, it's, said so. <laughs> so I, I pulled Mark aside. I said, can I talk to you for a minute? <clears throat> I said, man, what are you doing, man? No chicks. You know the rule with the span. There's no chicks in the dressing room, none on the side of the stage, none in the van, none, certainly none in the hotel rooms, but more especially than any of those. No girls on the record. What are you doing? You're gonna ruin us with all our guy fans. He says, no, Mikey, I found the new sound at last. So in they went and they made a terrible sound. A sound so horrible that I faded it up at the mastering lab because I couldn't bear the assault. In fact, I even named them the Nurk Sisters. So the way I've gotten past this terrible thing, which is, which is available tonight, so you can hear how the story plays out on this at the table. Hey, is that on Echoes? I don't know. It is. Let's have a look. Well, yes it is. It's on both. Let us you know it. If you buy both of them, you get two different renderings. So anyway, the way we deal with this every night is we have our audiences sing the Nurk Sisters part. So when we leave here tonight, we're going to hear your voices in our head, not theirs. Okay? It's a simple part, anybody could sing. Simmer. I'm going to sing this terribly romantic song, which didn't work for Mark. Then I'm going to bring you up at the end, and I'm going to sing around over you. It's going to be like a big rock show, and then we can all go, you know, burn down the uh, the ribeye guy. All right. Here we go. Hey. Seems 
is shining and the big dipper's upside down. Over us it's pouring out its light.
hang up on the yeah. airplanes together, and he gets up in the middle of the aisle when you're not supposed to be up, and he starts pointing at me saying, This is the way of this. He <laughs> pointing down the aisle, and then he starts seeing you at the road. Um, God knows I, I love him and the newsboys. I have a newsboy story. You know, they used to play the tracks like we're doing now. We, we, took a, we took a tip from them. And one night we were playing at this terrible water park or something together. They tried to con our bass player, Mark Harmon, into faking it to their tracks because their bass player like quit on the eve of the tour or something like that. We had just watched Dakota Motor Company and Davia tear up the whole place, and I just thought, I can't, I can't let Davia down. We, 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 we did it for Davia. Mark turned him down. And says, I won't do it. <laughs> That's entirely irrelevant to what we're about to do.
everybody. Show your love over at the merch table. We got so much cool stuff. Please leave with uh, renowns of things in your arms, and uh, make sure to keep up with the band. They're still active, and my, we're going to be opening for them at my next door neighbor's house next week. So if you live anywhere near Nashville and you want to come see the 77s, let me know later. But they're still active, so get on their mailing list and keep in touch with them. Because when that cornerstone goes away, it's going to be easy to disconnect from bands like this. So don't let it happen. Thank you, 77s. Thank you, cornerstone. We'll see you tomorrow night.